for comment. You are not new to comments, right? Co comment is any anything that uh, um, is that uh, syntax you use so that you m tell the interpreter to exclude that, that line of code from um, its evaluation or calculation or assessment. So there are two ways um, that you can do your commenting. If it is a single line, you can use a um, double four slash as your comment. So we, we call this one single line comment. So this is, a, this is called a single line comment. But at times the um the statement or the um sentence or or um, collection of sentences can be more than one line like this. So instead of doing first four slash four slash four slash multiple times, you can just do <clears throat> Four slash asterisks, just like how you did it in CSS, and asterisks four slash. So this is multi line, multi line comments. So what will happen is that anytime the interpreter Come, uh, get to this to this line of code. It will I I ignore it. It will skip it, and also it will skip these three lines. So let us quickly um, demonstrate that in the in the browser. So if I come here, you see. I go to the uh, back end. So, and I try to write, let me see, I think I have, okay, let me just leave this one alone. Else. So if I say var x, equal three, right? And I also say the y equal, um, say five. And I do the product equal, X multiplied by Y. So, and I say console dot log product. Now, if I now write, um, a line of sentence say that the following statement or the statement below rather the statement below calculate the product of two numbers. If I do this and I try to run it, you will see that the 
um, interpreter will complain about this line five because it does not fit any JavaScript uh, syntax. Now you can see he's saying that um, unexpected identifier statements. So he, he does not understand this. So, but to me, I just wanted to use this as a means to to understand what is going on. So, but I just it, it is for my own consumption. So, for me to um, I'll make the interpreter to ignore it, I'll just put the um, double force slash there, and you can see the color has changed. So, if I run my my code now, you will see the product is out. So what is happening is that the temperature has ignored this line five. So it went through line one, three, six, and eight. So that is what comment is doing. So this is single line comment. And if I want to do um, double line comment, I can see, and the next line, displayed displayed the result <clears throat> on the console so this is now multiple lines i can i can do four slash a four slash a that is fine Right, but assuming that you have multiple lines, which are more than two lines, it should be tedious for you to be doing four slash four slash all along each of the line. So rather, just do four slash and star, and at the end of this one, you do star and and four slash. So and that we still will recognize as what comment. So this is multi line comment. Is there any question, Mary? No, sir. Okay. So, comment is done and dusted. So, I move on to the next uh, ne next one, which is uh, <coughs> we have done, we can have, I've, I've introduced um, variables. So, let's go to operators. Operators. But before I go to operator, I want to explain, oh, why did I click that? I want to explain the two more data structures to you. Now, we we have have introduced the a type of data structure that holds that can hold just one data, for example, three, or the first name, Mary. Notice that anytime I'm uh, assigning number or working with numbers, I don't put double du double quotes before and after. It is simple because the data type is number. So we don't put the type, data type is number. So we don't put double quotes before and after numbers, but after strings, we put double quotes. And string, what is a string? String, is a collection collection of characters so m is a character e is a character r is another character and y 
is another character. So when I combine these four characters together to form a word, then I have a string. Is there any question on that? Okay, no question. So I move on. <clears throat> now, like I said earlier on, this is a type of data structure that can hold a single data, a single data. So this is one. I can I assign Mary to this. If I try to, if I print this, this, uh, if I log this X, right? If I console.log it, I will have three display. But let's say uh, along the line, before I console log the X or I, I, I display the, the value of X, if I do five, and I, and I assign it to a, x again, what will happen is that this 5 will replace this 3. Because if you remember, it's just a container, label, label x, that you can ins as, uh, store something in there. And it can only store one item. One item at a time. So if before you assign three there, you store three here initially, and later along your um, uh, your, your your program, you now assign five again. This five is going to replace three. So three will be uh, uh, deleted and five will now be in the place of three. So this is a type of data structure that can only hold one item at a time. But there will be a time in future that you will need to hold more than one item. For example, if, if you say class class one or oh, le le let me use a more universal word grade grade one now this grade one we have so many um students in them maybe um sean <clears throat> Maybe John, maybe Jane, or maybe Tola. Olu. Maybe Josh. Now, you cannot store if, if you use a normal variable that old just one item say grade one you <coughs> grade one class variable if you use this variable you can only store one item into that which is shown for example so how then are you going to store the other names and that is the reason why we need another data structure data structure of array called array array can hold more than one item so how do i label a container and array so I, I want to make this label array array or um array type of data, uh, data structure for example me I, I want to do grade one grade 
one right here. How do I label that container? We are already familiar with how to label a single um, a, 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 a container that can hold an item, right? That can hold an item. Now, for us to now de to now label, declare. So I'm trying to use the, the right word now, declare. I want to declare a container type of an array. So I can use the same var, but this time I will do grade one class, grade one. So I will now use the square bracket. So this is how you declare an array. So this now is an array. So this type of variable, it is a variable also. So this type of variable can now hold more than one data at, at the same time. So I can either do this and then later I will now assign assign each item to to um to the to the uh what's it called to the uh, array but before i go into this one let me quickly see that you can also create that variable in one sweep by doing this by assigning these names Sean, comma, John, comma, Jane, comma, Tulu, comma, Olu, comma, then Josh. Then I'll use close my square bracket. So I can declare and assign at the same time. So this is declaration and this is assignment. So we are we are doing both declaration and assignment at the same time. So, but if you want to just declare for us, for example, if I want to de declare by X like that, I can declare, this is declaration. So I'll be, I'm in, now using the right jargon. So this is declaration. I am declaring variable X. And variable X can only hold one item. Then I can now assign value three or any other value data to it. So this is assignment. This is assignment. So now the same thing in uh, for array. I can this is the this is declaration. I've, I've, I'm declaring it here. Declaration and here is assignment. Assignment. But in this case, just like we have here. This is both declaration and assignment done at this, uh, uh, in one sweep. Similarly, this is declaration and uh, assignment. This is assignment in one done in one, both declaration and assignment done in one sweep. Now, let us look at this um, array. One more time. So let's say I de declare and assign one. Okay, um, let me use letters one, two, 
थ्री थ्री फोर हम स्टॉप ये सो नाउ हाउ आर दिस आई एच ऑफ दिस डेटा how can you have access to them for example if i declare a, a, a normal variable and i assign <clears throat> assign george to it for example now for me to call to call this variable i will simply call it by by um uh, what's it called by typing the the name of the container of the variable so x and this if if i do console.log of x now i will have george printed out for me right but now how do i uh, have access to each of these item in an array simple now array is accessed using what is called the index the in index and the index always starts from zero zero one two three so if i want to access this one now i will just see console.log array item square bracket zero so this will now print me one similarly if i want to uh, as access for here i will say console.log array items the index which is three and four will now be printed out for me so i'm calling i'm calling the value at this position three which is four i'm calling the value at this position zero which is one i'm calling the value stored in this data structure remember this only can only old one so i'm calling the value there so that is george let us practicalize this things before i go further so because i don't want to lose lose you in the process so now let's see we have um, treated this one now so Now, if I want to call, now, I want to call, call, call the, the value of x. The value of x. Also, the log. Also, the log. I'm I'm, I'm getting the feedback. Getting feedback. <clears throat> Okay. So if I want to call the value I stored inside this variable X, so I will just do, I will just type in the name of that variable and you will see that three is printed out. So now let's see, I want to store um the names of the students in grade one class so i will use my square br bracket right there then i will start typing sean comma is it is a comma a comma separated Then 
صعب صلى قولوا لولا فونكي I'm, I'm going to stop there. So if you look carefully, you will see that this is a comma separated type of structure. So now let's see, I want to call the value in this position. All I need to do is console.log Grade one, that's the name of the variable first, the square bracket, then the index position of that data. If I console.log, you will see Sean is out. However, let's see what happens if I just do this. If I just type call the name of the variable, you can see, look at what is happening. Everything is printed out. Everything. Now you can see that Sean is now in the index was zero, sum one towards Funkevich is index five. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. I will always start with index zero. And one more thing I want you to pay attention to is what? The length property. You can see that the length of this array is 6. How? What is the length? The length is just described, giving you how many items or data that is stored in that variable, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if I want to know the length of any variable, I, I can of any array, I, I can just call the name, the name of that of that array, then dot length. If I do this, you will see that six will be print, printed out. Is there any question in what I, I just explained? Is there a question? No, sir. Okay. So, now you know what the normal variable of, of an item is. And now you know how to <clears throat> declare and assign an array of items. So one, two, three, four, and so on. Okay. I would like to discuss at this point also what our object is, but I'm going to leave this one out for now. Because this also is another type of data structure. Now, I want you to know that in programming, your ability to store data, because programming is just like computer. And what is computer? A machine that can take an input, or not just an input, that can take input, process it, process the input, and in the process of trying to um, do some calculation or processing or manipulation on the data, on this data, right, there will be need for storing, st storing, data 
intermittently intermittently and re re retrieving retrieving data intermit data intermittently then the, the ability to now store it finally then also the ability to output output if you see any system that that can do this that system is a computer get input process the input as and during process storing data intermittently is being done and retrieving data in, 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 uh, intermittently is being done then after or, or after everything is done you store it or you have to put it just like you are doing now you have a computer right in front of you you have your keyboard to input stuff you have your <clears throat> alu which is your processor which is in inside your processor called the cpu to process to do calculation to do many things you have your um ram you have your ram for storing intermittent data and retrieving in time in, for doing this storing data intermittently and retrieving data in, intermittently and if you want to if to, to see the results you have your monitor where things are displayed then you have your <coughs> I add this drive for permanent storage. Permanent storage. Maybe after everything is done, you want to store um, your data for the next day or for the next working hours. Then you store it. Then you can decide to shut down your your system to come back to it at a later time. That is all what computer is doing. And similarly, and that is something that you are doing in programming. You get input. You process the input. You display either alert, console.log, document.write, document. .write, document these are different ways that you can you can display your results then after all said and done you can now st store your data in the database for as permanent storage system that is all you are doing so your ability to understand to understand how to store and retrieve data in in the process of your computation is very very important now i have i have shown you right now two ways for now that you can store your variable one item at a time and you can even do multiple items at a time. Is there any question on what I just explained? Is there any question on what I explained? Okay. I take that as no question. So I move on. So, like I said before, I, I will come back to that other one object, but not now. So, let's, let me quickly talk to you 
on operators. Operators. What are operators? Or what is an operator? Operator is used to perform you know, different mathematics or logical computation, comparison, or whatever. Because when in, in the course of your doing computation, you will need to do addition and the operator for this is the plus subtraction and the operator for this is the minus sign multiplication multiplication and the operator for this is asterisk division And the operator for for this is for slash. Um, to get the remainder. Remainder. I will explain this later. Anyway, you use the percentage sign. We also call this the modulus. I'm, there are more. So I'm going to take it one after the other now. Let's start with the addition, the plus operator. This plus operator has two functions. The first is concatenation. Concatenation. And what does concatenation mean? It means to join two things together, two or more things together. Then the second function is the addition. So, and because it has um, two functions, most of the time they call this an overloaded function which in program we called method overloading method overloading if a function does more than one th more than one thing that method is overloaded <clears throat> now at what time does this plus sign does it does it do concatenation it is when you have strings involved <laughs> now let's take two strings and you are trying to join it to with a um, Sean right you are concatenating why? Because this is concatenation. I, this operator now is doing the function of concatenation right there. Why? Because one of the operands is a string. At least one of it is a string. So this is string data type. This is also string data type. So the output of this will be one word. Tola Sean. You will note that there's no space in between them. However, if you do this, Tola space loss Sean that you have space in between the two names. This also can be achieved 
by doing solar loss space shion. Another way you can achieve this is doing solar clause space loss shown. All these three, one, two, and three, we give you this. Is there any question? No question. The no, sir. The second function is very straightforward. And this is done with two numbers. If I have two plus three, this we evaluate to five. If I have four plus 10, this we evaluate to 14. But if I have, if I have four plus shown here, it will try to add this with this, but once it, it sees that it cannot do that summation, it will concatenate the two together. Let's quickly demonstrate this operator before we close for today. I have first name, I have second name, If I do concatenation and I print it, variable first name, plus second name. You can see solution. If I want space in between, I can do space, then plus. Now I have that. If I do not want to create, give space here, I can create the space right here, and I see I have same. Or, Give the space right at the beginning here, and I will see how my space. Is there any question? No question. So let's see. In the case I, I assign four to this, and I enter, you will see four shown. The first attempt is to try to add this to this number because it's seeing this as a number but if it can't then it will, it will not concatenate one thing i want you to note in javascript is that the type is dynamically assigned you know as explained in the uh, in the other class we have um that data type of number we have a um, string I've, I've explained strings again today and we have a boolean boolean these are the three major there are others which under this number we have integer, we have float, 
which we are still going to talk about later. And at times we have character, single item, and the normal string. And this one is just either true or false. That is called Boolean. It's a true or false statement. So these are the three major data types. We call them primitive data type. So now, if I, as shown earlier on, I assign four into one variable, and as I, I assign string into another variable, it, and I try to add the two together, the first thing the interviewer will try to do is to add four and shown mathematically. But since it, this is, it, it will eventually, eventually understand that this is what a string data type. So it will now concatenate the two together. Do you understand that? Good. Silence means I understood. So now, if but in the case of numbers, two numbers, Let's go back to the code environment. If I have six here, for example, definitely the output should be 10. Because now he's seeing it as a, as, as a number and number. And the, the other time I said it is um uh, types in JavaScript is dynamic. For example, what do I mean by dynamic? Is this, if I declare a variable X and initially I assign three, the type of this, num of this variable, if I do type of on this variable, it will give me number. But in the process, maybe later, I assigned Josh to this. If I do type of again, what type of data do I have in, in X again? It, it, it will give me a string. So you can see that I can change the data type at will. This is one of the features of JavaScript. This cannot be done in programming um, a language like Java, C Sharp, Python, and, and, and the likes, it cannot be done because all this, they are strongly, strongly typed language. They are strongly typed language. And you can't just declare a variable with just var. In these languages, if you want to, if you want, integers to be assigned to this variable x, you must declare it as integer. And once this is declared as integer, you cannot assign any other data type to it. It will never take it. Even you cannot assign a float to it. It will two point something. Float, any number with decimal point is a float. Even Though two point five is a no, is is a number, but it's a float. It's not an integer. This all this program will reject it. But in JavaScript, it is so dynamic that you can, I can later assign two point five to this. Yes, JavaScript we we accept it. Why? Because the variables are dynamic. Yeah, it's not strong. It's, it's not a strongly typed language, but they they have attempted <coughs> to to correct this this in another language called TypeScript. TypeScript. This TypeScript is from JavaScript. But they, they are now trying to make JavaScript as this other program to be strongly typed. I the word 
type type script so now let's go back to the um programming uh, uh, console now i've explained this operator using the string numbers even if i put 6.6 .6, it will give me 10.6 is there any question before i call it a day is there any question no sir all right so i can stop here today I gave an assignment, but the um, the attendance was so poor, was so poor today. I can't go through the, the uh, that assignment today. Maybe in the next class, we are going to we go through the assignment in the next class. So I'm not giving any assignment today. Those who are who are here to do the the first the the, the other assignment should go and do it. All right, thank you.